Hello, I'm Robert and in this tutorial I want to cover the principal shader. It might take me two videos to cover it all so I don't make uh, ridiculously long uh, tutorials. But in this first video I will try to at least cover the dielectric and metal materials which is one of the big things of the principal shader and some other few things. So normally uh, if you wanted to add a glass-like material to, let's say, well, whatever object, you would make a diffuse with whatever color you want and a glossy, and you would add this to a mix shader. And if you wanted some Fresnel, you would add a later weight or just a Fresnel node. So what's really good of the principal shader is you only need that one node. It is very big and kind of scary at first, but it's really really cool and what's really good about it is that it has already Fresnel in it so you don't have to add it so it's already more realistic by default so that's very 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 cool so I want to delete these and I want to add the principal shader and don't freak out please it's pretty big so as you can see it's pretty huge and I want to make a red color like I did before. And you probably can appreciate some Fresnel. Um, Fresnel pretty much is... Um, so let's say we got a sphere. And in the edges of the sphere, not the edges, but like what you see. You can see like some edges. The borders, I guess you could call them. They reflect more than in the center, and it depends on a bit of the angle and stuff. So in the edges, especially if we lower the roughness, you can appreciate Fresnel, which is pretty cool. So, um, well, first of all, I want you to make a skin-like color, and this is also very cool if you wanted to make, for example, a human. Uh, these uh, three options over here, well first of all this option, the base color, is just like the normal diffuse. And by the way, the between multi-scatter GGX, no sort uh, yeah GGX and GGX just use the first one. There isn't really that big of a difference. And pretty much uh, what I was going to say before, these three things over here are pretty much for making humans. So if I add a little bit of this, you'll notice, well, once you add some more, like zero, no, that's too much. You can see like, it kind of looks like flesh. So that's pretty cool, something pretty nice. Although you probably won't be using this much unless you uh, model humans, which at least I don't really do that too often. And well, uh, here we have the metallic value so a metal if it's dielectric it means it's a non-metal a dielectric material and if it's metal it's a metal material so for dielectrics we want to leave this at zero and just think of anything that's not metal that's dielectric and if it and if it is metal uh, we want to leave this at one we don't really want values in between so you can already appreciate that it looks like metal, it's pretty cool. But I want to leave this at zero. And for... I don't know what they're called in English, but like the mix of a plastic with a metal will probably be actually a value in between. Probably tending, probably uh, closer to one than to zero. Although I'm not really sure about those values, so if you're going to maybe model like a plane or something, some of those parts, or not completely metal, of course, the like the insides and stuff. So just look it up. So uh, the specular is something you want to leave by default uh, because it's just how it should be. Uh, if you change this, it's probably if you're going for some sort of more non-realistic stylized uh, style. So if I lower this, well, you probably can't really see that much of a difference but pretty much you want to leave this by default unless you want to cheat to make something look realistic without doing too much effort and the specular tint is pretty much um 
it adds like in these uh, lighter areas it kind of blends those lighter areas with the original color so if I make this one you might be able to appreciate it looks more like the base color I uh, would normally just leave it at zero just add a little bit it really depends on what you're going for and well the roughness the roughness will um, this will pretty much be our glossy so if I make this zero you'll see it's pretty it's pretty much like adding a gloss shader and if we add this at one it doesn't reflect light at all and well basically what the, a gloss shader does or in this case roughness if it has a roughness of one it doesn't reflect light at all so it's kind of like that's like a very very bumpy surface so maybe if you're going for like something wooden i would make a roughness of maybe 0 0.95 something like that and if you're going for something like glass definitely something like at max 0 0.1 maybe a bit less for metals you probably want unless it's if it's very like how do you say it in english like very smooth you definitely want to have lower roughness and if we have for example a metal with low roughness it's pretty much a metal that's very nice and very uniform in the sense that it's very smooth so it looks pretty cool and i went to well the anis anisotropic and anisotropic rotation is pretty much for uh, something like maybe circular where the reflection has to be stretched I don't really um, know how to use it very well but it's well if you know how to use it you can integrate this with your workflow and I want to skip sheen and sheen tent just for a minute and I'll show you what it does later okay and for clear coat so clear coat is like adding two layers of glossiness so um, if so to see a big difference you probably want to lower the roughness quite a bit so it's adding like a layer on top of more glossy so if i make this one you might be able to distinguish two layers so maybe it's kind of like think of it like adding varnish on top of a table and with the clear well for and also let's say you have a table you're modeling a table with wood and you can add some some normal for like um just making it bumpy like normal normal map and for clear coat normal you can add maybe like a varnish normal for the table and you could add like some scratches and that could look so so realistic so it looks like uh, it's not taking me too long so i'm just going to make this one whole video so pretty much that's what clear coat does and the clear coat roughness is just pretty much like the, the roughness it's pretty much the same <laughs> excuse me so if i make this one it will not reflect at all although we do have the roughness from the normal layer let's call it the normal layer um working so i would obviously just leave this at like 0 0.1 or something like that and for ior this in transmission this will make a glass and we know that a glass is not yellow it's white so let's turn this into white well just swipe make all these values one and as you can see we already have a, our glass shader you can lower this and just do whatever you feel like so for the sheen and sheen tint i want to actually use a different object and i want this to be absolutely opaque i think that's how you say it in english and i'm going to make maybe brownish color sort of brownish i guess 
and we want less roughness definitely less roughness and this is pretty much for like a piece of cloth and it's very subtle so just please take a good look so I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it please take a good look in these uh, lighter areas right now and when I add the sheen you'll probably notice like it's a bit lighter I'm not sure if you can see it in the video I hope you can but pretty much that's what it does and pretty much with the sheen tint actually maybe if I lowered your roughness completely you can tell the difference yeah actually you can although obviously for a cloth you wouldn't want to have your roughness at zero but if we make our sheen one you can actually see a big difference and the sheen tint pretty much does the same as specular tint so if I make this zero it's going to be white and if, and if I make this one it's pretty much going to be it's going to look like going to get the color of the base color so yeah that's pretty much all for this video if you have any questions please make sure to comment down below and i'll try to answer them as fast as possible if you liked it make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching and see you in the next one bye